Hello, everyone. This is Al Fadi, and I want to welcome you back to a continuation of this new series on Mecca, where we are unpacking more and more evidence concerning the holes in the Islamic narrative, uh, concerning the prominence of Mecca, the importance of Mecca, and many other aspects of that. Today will be no exception, but we are going to, of course, invite our dear brother, Dr. Jay Smith, who is with us here in studio to continue with his uh, you know, effort to unpack any additional discoveries, any additional evidence, and uh, to point to you the reason why we are doing series like this, why it's extremely important for you to engage in these discussions with Muslim friends. And if you're a Muslim, we really invite you to take your time to just examine the references, the evidence that we are presenting to you. We're not here really to force anything uh, on anyone. We are here to point the obvious to everyone. And that's our hope is that you will take these discoveries and compare them to what we call the standard Islamic narrative and you be the judge. Dr. J, welcome back. Thank you for having me back again. Now, listen, this is a um... This, this whole idea of standard Islamic narrative has holes in it, coined by Dr. Yusuf Qadi back on June 8, 2020. Fascinating because we're, these holes are coming fast and furious. And we've been zeroing in on Mecca. We've been looking at its history. We've been asking it questions. And another one comes up on a area that I've never really thought of before, but I discovered about a, a month and a half ago. I want to go to the slide, and to introduce this, I want to look at this slide here. Uh, take a look at this. This is a canyon. Um, where is it? Well, it's in Mars. And back at the end of 2021, this was all over the news. The Russians and the Europeans had sent up a, uh, a spaceship to Mars, and they, they, they've known about this ca ca canyon. It's called canyon, sorry. It's called the Valles Marineris Canyon system, similar to our Grand Canyon that we have mm -hmm. in America, but it is 2,000 miles long. That is 2,000 mile long, so quite a bit larger than what we have in the Grand Canyon. It's about the same length as from New York to California, so you can see we're talking about an enormous size. What's fascinating, as they were looking and uh, from space looking down onto this canyon, canyon sorry, uh, they, scientists, uh, using the, what they call, I'm going to see, I'm going to have to read it here because it's, it's too difficult to memorize. Roscosmos ExoMars Trace Gas Orbiter. This is the machine that looks down to right. look underneath the surface of, the, of Mars. Right. They found water below its surface. Mm -hmm. Using what they call the fine resolution epithermal neutron detector, too much of a mouthful, we'll just call it FRENT. This is the instrument, and they said this instrument suggests that in this canyon here, canyon here uh, there were about 40% of it underneath of it has water, mm -hmm. has water. That was all over the news. Why was that all over the news? Well, one for one very good reason. You and I need water to survive. That's right. Not. Absolutely. Because once you have water, then you have vegetation. And once you have vegetation, then we can survive there. And of course, the whole premise is, if we're going to go to Mars and spend all this money and then get send this equipment up there and go and live there, we need to be able to water ourselves, because once you have water, then you have vegetation. Once you have vegetation, we can live. That's all you need. Which It's very simple. Humans only need two things, water and food, water and food, water and food. So with that premise, if we can find water in Mars, then we can go live on Mars. Now take a look at these pictures here. Let's go up to these pictures. These were pictures taken between 1800 and 1900 AD. These are pictures of Mecca. Uh, that's what Mecca take, looked like. Now, just looking at these right off the top of your head, what do you notice about them? Well, I mean, uh, it, it's obvious that uh, we're having, you know, a desert-like, rocky area. I mean, uh, no vegetations per se, natural vegetations. I would uh, emphasize I say that because I'm sure uh, the government today is planting uh, trees. When I used to go there, of course, there are trees in the, in the roads re leading to the uh, Grand Mosque, uh, that doesn't mean that you cannot use in modern technology, uh, have vegetations and so on and so forth. Uh, but but you can tell it's it's a rocky valley, if you wish, even though it's a flat valley, as I mentioned before. And um, you're not seeing anything you would expect in a in a very uh, a highly vegetated uh, 
place. Okay, there, over here you can you can see the yeah. Kaaba. That's a mm -hmm. and remember these are from 1800 to 1900. These are not modern pictures. That's I right. did this purposely. That's I right. wanted old pictures. We're not because today you will see vegetation there. Today you will see fountains there. Right. Today you'll see pools right. there. Right. There's all kinds. It looks like modern cities today, but not back in the 1800s. And this is just Correct. the 1800s. Take a look at this. Is even earlier. This is a picture of drawing of what it looked like earlier. But these are actual pictures of the Kaaba. And you notice there it is dry. It is desert. It is a plain. This is not a valley. This is a plain right. that it's and in. And this is how it looked, uh, uh, you know, at least in my days. Uh, it would have been something like this. And of course, they continue the expansion. Yeah, well. there, there you can see the the, yeah. so, the corridor of Safa and Marwa right. right there. So you can't see that today anymore. That's all been covered over and it's all been There's built There's a lot up. of marble outside, parking, you know, and enclosed and even expansions and so on and so forth. But there's yeah. no grassy knolls here. There are no meadows here. There are no forests here. Uh, it's pretty barren. Why is it barren? Well, to understand why it's barren, let's look at this. Uh, let's look at some topographical maps. So I picked up some of these four topographical maps that I'm putting up right here. Uh, can you notice, look at these topographical maps. What is the first thing you notice about them? These are not just normal maps, these are topographical maps. Well, I mean, this is the map of Saudi where I come from. There is desert in here. Yeah, that's all desert, isn't it? it is. I mean, I mean, technically this is literally called the empty quarter, Rub al Khali, why? It's empty because there isn't any reason for people to inhabit this region. It's just pure desert. There is a lot of rocky deserts in here. Only this southwest corner bordering Yemen is higher elevation. There are kind of like forest like, uh, you know, uh, or resort, you know, sites. You get a lot of rain vegetations. But other than that, you know, it's just plain desert. And this is modern. These are modern day topographical exactly. maps. This is exactly. not from the 7th century. And satellites can show you these things. And you will see that there is a little bit of greenery they see. You can see people knowing that. Well, yeah, there is some greenery. That. No, that's greenery from today because of the fact that they are now watering these areas and they are now irrigating Compared these to areas. look at the west side, especially in the Mesopotamia area, you'll see some greenery over there. Up here. This is where yeah. all the greens are because there's where the rivers are. See the two major right. rivers? That's right. Mesopotamia, the place right. of the area of two rivers. Yeah. That makes sense. So in the north, there are greenery. In the south, there is there's vegetation talking, we're talking about the seventh century. Now, what? why is that important? Well, when you notice that the central part, Medina and Mecca, is all desert. So this part is desert. There it is, desert. There you can see it's desert. There it is all desert, 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 desert. It is. There, I mean, I'm a geologist, by the way, and there is a lot of lava in this site. Lava, meaning volcanic rocks. You cannot grow vegetation on volcanic rocks. It's rocks. You need soil for that. Okay, and here's my meme. This is what I want to get to. Now we're going to show you. First of all, where there is a desert, there is no water. Where there is no water, there is no food. Where there is no food, there are no people. Where there are no people, there is no towns. Where there are no towns, there are no cities. Where there are no cities, there is no civilization. Where there is no civilization, there is no history. Right. What have I just done? That's a meme that I used at Speaker's Corner back in October of 2021. I got up on the ladder and I wanted to do this with Hatun Tosh. Hatun Tosh, you know, is a good friend of ours. She's a colleague of ours. She's been at Speaker's Corner. She took over my ministry and has been there doing that great job for the last five years. And I wanted to say, I'm going to get up here and I'm going to introduce uh, the problems with Mecca. And she says, Jay, I don't really want to talk about Mecca because I don't agree with you about Mecca. I said, well, let's just don't, don't say this while we're on the ladder. Bear with me. Get us get on the ladder and let me show you what the problem is. And so I showed these four pictures that I have up here. I showed these four pictures mm -hmm. and I showed the crowd. What do you notice about these four pictures? These are topographical maps. These are not political maps. This is not geographical. This is topographical. What do you notice about them? And they said, well, it's brown. Yes, absolutely. It's And where it's brown, that means it's a desert. Where there's no desert, there's no water. Where there's not, there's no food. There are no people, no towns, no cities, no civilization, no history. That's all I said. It took maybe about 10 seconds to say that. And I turned towards Hatun and I said, does this finally convince you? And she got it. The, the penny drops, so to speak. And what has happened since then is people have been coming back to me and they said, it works. We've said this all over. 
He said, everywhere we go, whenever Muslims start talking about the history and about the, all that Muhammad did, the only thing to say is, wait a minute, there's no water there. If there's no water, there is no food. There's no food, there are no people. There are no people, there are no towns, no cities, no civilization. There is no history there. You've got a problem. You've got to have water there for people to live. You've got to have water there for Muhammad to have been there. You've got to have water there for everything to have happened. All these traditions that speak about this matter in that place, doing these things at that time, all depend on something as simple as water. For the same reason that you need water in Mars, you also need water in Mecca. If they don't have it in Mars, then there's no one going to live there in Mars. In the same token, if they didn't have it in Mecca, then no one was living there in Mecca. So when Muslims keep on telling us to go back to Adam and Eve in Mecca, when Muslims keep telling us that Abraham was in Mecca, when Muslims keep telling us that, that Muhammad was born there and spent the first 52 years in Mecca, all we have to respond is there's no water. Yeah. If there's no water, the rest of the meme just falls into place. And for all of those who are what, listening to me, all you Muslims, whenever you bring up any reference to a man named Mecca living in a place, I'm sorry, a man named Muhammad, let's get their name right, a man named Muhammad living in a place like Mecca, any start you start talking about this man or what he did or what he said or where he went, I'm just going to ask you one little question, where is their water? Because if there is no water, there is no civilization. If there is no civilization, there is no history. If there is no history, then where is your Muhammad? And if you don't have Muhammad, you don't have the Quran. And if you don't have the Quran, you don't have Islam. Because you absolutely need the Book of the Man in order to have a place. And if the place doesn't exist, you throw out the Book of the Man, you throw out Islam, and everything comes crashing down just because you have no water. And also, I want to add this, uh, Jay, and to my viewers, somebody might come back and say, well, wait a minute. I mean, sometimes in the desert, you find springs. That's true. How do you know that there are springs? You see vegetation around them, trees, palm trees, other things. That's what we're trying to say. Show us this in Mecca. You won't find it. We're going to get to that next because yeah. we're going to talk about those springs. That's yeah. the isolation of Mecca. Mecca is not a place that just doesn't have any water. It is completely isolated from the places where they do have springs. That's the next episode. Well, you've heard the man. That's what we are going to explore in the next maybe episode or at least in the next few episodes. So hopefully everyone been enjoying uh, these additional evidence or even the unpacking or previous one that we've shared with you. For instance, you know, the burial sites of the prophets. We unpack this for you even further than in our previous uh, video series that we called In Search of a Place. And again, we welcome all of your comments, all of your interactions. And if you have any specific questions for me or for Dr. J, make sure you reach out to us through our uh, basically prospective channels. His channel or YouTube channel is called Fonder Films. Mine is called Sierra International. And we are always welcome uh, hearing from you and your emails and your comments. Until then, have a blessed day. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel, Sierra International, and click on the bell so that you receive notifications whenever we publish a new video or go live. I would also like to appeal to you to consider becoming a Patreon patron by clicking the link right below. By doing so, you can give towards the production of these videos. There are also other options for you where you can give to our channel. I thank you from the bottom of my heart.